Hi, I'm Patsy Pabalan. The World Bank Group and International Monetary Fund annual meetings are happening, and a huge topic is agriculture. The challenge, feeding 9 billion people by 2030. How will we do it when climate change is affecting our food supply? I want to know. So let's talk to Ethel Senhauser, Director of Agriculture Global Practice. So Ethel, why is having a climate smart food system important? What do we want to achieve? We want to put in place a food system that will allow us to feed every person, everywhere, every day, mm -hmm. with nutritious food that is produced in a sustainable way. That's a big dream. Mm -hmm. But we can do that, and we can do that by what we call the triple win. That is producing food, more food, mm -hmm. that is more resiliently produced, and that it also helps in mitigating the emissions that come from the sector, and also helping on sinking the carbon that comes that comes from the, from the atmosphere, and we can do that. Well, let's say I'm a farmer, and I've been growing my food like my ancestors did. It's been generations. How do you convince me to change? Well, if you're a farmer, you will probably be already feeling the effects of climate change. You won't call it climate change, but you would know that if the weather is different, your yields will be different. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. Suppose that you are a rice farmer in Sri Lanka or in Thailand today, mm -hmm. and you have already suffered a lot from effects of floods in your production. There's a technology today that is called AWD, mm -hmm. alternate wetting and drying, that can help you as a farmer to put together that triple in we were speaking before. Right. And what does this mean? This means a different way of growing your rice that will allow you to reduce your inputs, which means more money because mm -hmm. you save on them. It will allow us to use less water, up to 20%, 25% of less water. That's a gain for the environment. Right. And it will allow you to increase your production 15, 20% more, while at the same time reduce the methane emissions that is a gain for the planet. And that can be up to 50%. So if these technologies are available, and you are a farmer can put them together and on top of that increase your yields. Wouldn't you use them? Well, clearly this is a huge topic and there's a lot of data and research on this. Now, what do we need to prioritize and how will we get there? The first thing is to know where to start right. and how to prioritize. And one of the things that countries are doing, particularly in Latin America, but in Africa and more increasingly also in Asia, is to have some analysis or baselines mm. on how each agriculture practice is contributing to climate change and is related to climate. So which are the practices that are more climate friendly mm -hmm. and which are the ones where the challenges still remain. Building on that, then you can work on knowledge. There's a lot that the world already does and farmers don't know it and governments don't know it and the private sector doesn't know it. So there's a whole agenda on communication and you can also work more on putting incentives in place so that people do the right thing and don't do the wrong thing. All the bad subsidies of agriculture can be translated into incentives to do the right thing. Right. And then you need more science mm -hmm. and you need more knowledge and more research. Well, thank you so much for your time, Ethel. I mean, I'm excited to see the efforts around this. Thank you again.